नमस्ते मैं सेल्फ जेवियन शिल्पा ठाकुर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फैकल्टी ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंस जयोति विद्यापीठ वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे इज माय टॉपिक इज ऑक्युलर ड्रग डिलीवरी सिस्टम इंट्रोडक्शन द नोवेल अप्रोच इन व्हिच ड्रग कैन बी इंस्टिल्ड ऑन द कल बी सैक ऑफ द आई इज नोन एज ऑक्युलर ड्रग डिलीवरी सिस्टम ऑप्थेलमिक प्रिपेरेशंस आर स्पेशलाइज्ड स्टराइल प्रिपेरेशंस ऑफ डोजेज फॉर्म्स डिजाइंड टू बी इंस्टिल्ड ऑन टू इफ इट इज इंस्टिल्ड ऑन द एक्सटर्नल सरफेस ऑफ द आई देन इट इज कॉल्ड टॉपिकल इफ इन एडमिनिस्ट्रेड इनसाइड इट इज कॉल्ड इंट्राओक्युलर एंड इफ इट इज एडमिनिस्ट्रेड एडजेसेंट टू द आई दैट इज नोन एज पेरीऑक्युलर रूट और इट कैन आल्सो बी यूज्ड इन कंजंक्शन विद एन ऑप्थेलमिक डिवाइस the most commonly administered dosage forms are solutions suspensions and ointments that are used to instill inside the eye and used as a drug delivery the poor bioavailability of drugs from ocular dosage form is mainly due to the precorneal loss factors which include a uh, solution drainage lacrimation tear dynamics tear dissolution tear turnover conjunctival absorption non productive absorption transient residence time in the caldi sac and the relative impermeability of the corneal epithelial membrane these are the major challenges because of which it is a reason to develop a new drug delivery system that is ocular drug delivery ocular drug delivery can be mainly prepared as novel forms like gels ointments microspheres ocular inserts nanoparticles etc next advantages of the uh, ocular drug delivery system it increases accurate dosing as the accurate dose can be instilled in the eye next provides sustained and controlled drug delivery systems using ocular drug delivery we can uh, make sustained and uh, uh, controlled drugs so that it can uh, maintain a dose for the longer time it increases ocular bioavailability of the drugs next is it pro it can provide comfort and it gives better compliance to the patients as it is easy to be installed improves therapeutic performance of the drug as it is a novel approach the therapeutic efficacy has been improved it provides better housing of delivery system it also has some of the disadvantages in it first is dosage form cannot be terminated during an emergency once the dosage form has been instilled inside the caldi sac it is difficult to be terminated if it is an emergency it uh, next disadvantage is it, it also interferes with the vision the vision will be affected as the dosage form will uh, as uh, we talk about the sustained or controlled release dosage form this dosage form will be kept for a longer time will stay in the caldi sac for a longer time and it might interfere for a longer period of time with the vision next disadvantage is difficult in placement and removal as it is a novel form it needs to be placed and removed very properly and uh, needs a uh, expert to this uh, next disadvantage is occasional loss during sleep or while rubbing eyes the dosage form can be lost during sleeping or while rubbing the eyes the dosage form can be lost from the eyes next we will talk about the anatomy of the eye it consists of the eye consists of three layers outer sclera the middle choroid layer and the inner retina let us talk about the anatomy as keeping the drug delivery in mind the sclera is a tough fibrous coating that protects the inner layers it is white except for the transparent area at the front as it is shown in the figure the cornea which allows light to enter the eye the choroid layer that is the second one situated inside the sclera contains many blood vessels and is modified at the front of the eye as the pigmented iris the biconvex lens is situated just behind the pupil as it is shown the chamber behind the lens is filled 
with vitreous humor that is a gelatinous substance occupying 80% of the eyeball. The anterior and posterior chambers are situated between the cornea and iris and the lens respectively and are filled with aqueous humor. At the back of the eye is light detecting retina. Next, we will talk about some of the intraocular barriers. As we know, uh, there are many barriers for each and every drug delivery system. As we're talking about the ocular drug delivery system, we will talk about the intraocular barriers. These barriers act as a barrier for the drug so that the drug transport becomes a, a difficult task to be administered and to be instilled inside the cul-de sac. First barrier is tear. The precorneal barrier is the tear film, which reduces the effective concentration of the administered drugs due to dilution by the tear as the tear turnover is one microliter per minute. Accelerated clearance and binding of the drug molecule to the tear proteins. The dosing volume of installation is generally 20 to 50 microliter, the dose given is 20 to 50 microliters, whereas the culti sac size is only 7 to 10 microliter. As we see, the culti sac size is less than the dosing volume. Thus, tear many a times will spill out the excess volume on the cheek or exit through the nasolacrimal duct. Therefore, tear acts as the intraocular barrier. Next, is cornea. The cornea consists of three layers such as epithelium, stroma and endothelium and it acts as a mechanical barrier to inhibit transport of exogenous substances into the eyes. Third barrier is conjunctiva. Conjunctiva of eyelids is a thin and transparent membrane. It is a thin membrane which is involved in the formation and maintenance of the tear film. The conjunctiva or episclera is highly supplied with capillaries and also lymphatics. Hence, administered drugs in the conjunctival space may be cleared, can be, get, uh, can be cleared through the blood or the lymph that is flowing. Next barrier is sclera, the increase of hydrophilic or the lipophilic characteristic of drugs shows lower permeability in the sclera region, as we have talked about in the anatomy. Next is choroid, or which is also known as Groot's membrane. Thickness changes of choroid and Groot's membrane might affect drug permeability from subconjunctiva space into the retina and vitreous chamber. Retina. Next, the barrier restricting drug penetration from the vitreous to the retina is the internal limiting membrane. This internal limiting membrane separates the retina and vitreous and is composed of 10 distinct extracellular metric proteins. Last intraocular barrier is blood retinal barrier. Blood retinal barrier restricts drug transport from blood to the retina. Next topic is, as there are many intraocular barriers, there, are, uh, there have been uh, prepared some methods to overcome these barriers. The methods are classified into two different approaches. First is physical methods and second is chemical approaches. In physical methods, there are three different methods, iontophoresis, sonophoresis and microneedles. First, let us talk about iontophoresis. It is the process in which direct current drives, uh, drives ions into the cells or the tissues. In this process, application of a low intensity electrical current enhances drug delivery across my biological membranes by causing electro repulsion and electro osmosis of the drug molecule. Both electro repulsion and electro osmosis of the drug molecule have different effects for, the, uh, for overcoming the barriers. Electro repulsion primarily applies to the movement of ionic drugs, while electroosmosis can enhance the transport of both neural drugs as well as the charged molecules by the convective solvent flow. Next topic is sonophoresis, which is also known as ultrasound. 
It involves the application of a sound field at frequencies higher than 40 kilohertz to improve drug transport across biological membranes, including ocular barriers. The mechanism for ultrasound enhanced drug delivery take into account non-thermal and thermal effects with ultrasound parameters, co-administration of microbubbles and drug characteristics, all having an effect on delivery efficacy. Third is micro needles. Micro needles are the micro, uh, micrometer sized needles or arrays of such fabricated by adapting micro electronic tools. Applying micro needles to biological membranes can create tiny transport pathways, thereby allowing drugs to penetrate across these barriers. These were the physical methods that can be used as to overcome the barriers that we saw before in the ocular drug delivery system. Next, let us talk about chemical approaches. Chemical modification of drugs to improve therapeutic efficacy and to enhance various physicochemical properties such as solubility, stability, permeability, and evasion of efflux pumps, an established approach in therapeutic drug delivery. The metabolic activity of ocular tissues provides an opportunity of utilization of chemically modified drugs and have a predictable metabolic bioconversion in the eye. Next, let us talk about ocular transformulations. Ocular formulations are instilled by four different methods. First, the drug delivery system, that is to the anterior segment of eye. Next, drug delivery to the posterior segment of eye. Third, advanced delivery system. And fourth is the vesicular drug delivery system. Let us talk about it step by step. First, drug delivery systems to the interior segment. If you have, uh, if you need to deliver the drug to the interior segment of the eye, we can we have options like eye drops. That is the most simplest and easiest way used to in uh, deliver the drug in the eyes. Next, that is novel approach is the ophthalmic inserts that are also known as ocular inserts. These ocular inserts have been divided into three types insoluble inserts, soluble inserts, and bioerodible inserts. As per the names, it has been prepared in various different uh, ways and used for different purposes for the drugs that are to be instilled in the curly sac and that are used for the ocular drug delivery system. Next is drug delivery system to posterior segment of the eye. In this, we have two things, that is intravitreal implants, we can prepare implants and use these implants for the posterior segment delivering the drug. Or we can use injectable particulate systems, injectables that can be injected and thus applied drug delivery to the pelvi sac. Next is advanced delivery systems. In these advanced delivery systems, the recent latest technologies have been used that can be helpful to deliver the drug in the ocular drug delivery system. One is cell encapsulation, gene therapy, stem cell therapy, protein and peptide therapy, scleral plug therapy, SARNA, oligonucleotide therapy, aptamer, ribozyme therapy, etc. Last is the vesicular drug delivery system. As the name goes, it forms a vesicle and this vesicle, uh, these small vesicles entrap the drug and these entrapped vesicular formulations are instilled inside the cultivated sac or given as an ocular drug delivery to deliver the drug for a specific purpose. These vesicular drug delivery systems uh, have, uh, are different like liposomes, neosomes, pharmacosomes, etc. As we see, these are the nanotechnologies used for the delivering system and thus deliver the drug to the ocular drug delivery system. This was a short note on ocular drug delivery system, which is a novel approach for delivering drugs through the cul-de-sac area of the eye. Thank you.